or the consciousness of that behavior to disappear. And so over a period of time, you know, figure the uh, centuries that African populations have been in America, it's possible uh, that the population merely American, uh, each of these is a, st a step or an indication that there is some loss of conscious contact with one's true identity. You have talked about the neuroses, I guess that's the word maybe, mm -hmm. among the European population um, during this enslaving period. Would you address that, please? Right. Well, in, if you operate a system of domination, a formal system of domination, by those rules that I talk about, you have to confront the truth. And, and the only way that you can be consistent in applying those rules is ultimately to bend the truth. And after a while, it results in a, an adaptive process that, I, that we call racism, which is, a, is really a, a mental disorder. Uh, it's a disorder uh, in the mental sense because it follows the rules of mental disorder. For example, manifestations of racist behavior as a result of domination are uh, the denial of reality, uh, perceptual distortion, delusions of grandeur, phobias in the face of differences, and projecting blame, you know, blaming the victim. Now explain so these, those, please. Well, each of these are, are ways that uh, I guess you call them adjustment or adaptive mechanisms. Uh, for example, if you, uh, if you take um, uh, Africa as it really existed and uh, you attempt to subjugate Africa as Europeans did, it couldn't work if you're subjugating another human being. So that human being had to be changed mentally into something else. It had to be changed into a subhuman or an animal or anything else. But it, you could not operate and be consistent with yourself, so it required a change in one's mind, uh, which meant that the Europeans had to begin to lie to themselves about what Africa was and had been. And, and in the process of keeping that misinformation going, then one adapts to unreality. So when you see reality, it's necessary to deny reality. So denial of reality would be an, an example of that, would be to look at uh, the population of Egypt, which was a black population and to say it was a white population. That's a flat-out denial of what the facts say, and that, of course, has been uh, typical throughout history. Um, uh, perceptual distortion is just simply not getting a clear view of what, of what is really true, even while looking at the truth. Um, teaching of white supremacy means the belief in the supremacy of white people, or it could be anyone, who would follow the rules of oppression. If one decided that their own group was superior to all other groups, that would be an example of, um, of uh, what I call a Napoleonic complex, because it is not true that the, the white group is superior to anyone else, but the belief in that would be a psychological uh, distortion of, of, of reality, and in that sense would be, um, um, would be following the rules for oppression. As we get ready to go to the first slide, mm -hmm. you've said that racism is a mental disorder. Yes. I was interviewing a gentleman the other day, and I, I uh, brought that up in a conversation, mm -hmm. and he said, well, racism is not a mental disorder. He said, racism is very ordered. He mm -hmm. said that whites, Europeans, know exactly what they're doing, that uh, racism is a political and economic convenience. How do, how do you respond to that? Well, I think it depends on who you're talking about. If you uh -huh. talk about the, you see, I think of systems as having designers, as having advocates, as having players, and as having pawns. Mm -hmm. This is from game theory, and I borrowed that from Bob Williams, who analyzes systems in that way. Uh, everybody is not a game maker or a game designer. So the game designer might be conscious of creating a racist system, whereas the advocate probably becomes unconscious. They buy into the system that was created by the designer. And so the advocate is a racist in the sense that I'm talking about it, or the dealer, you know, those people who carry out the rules of the master in the system without really knowing why the master created the system or even that a system was created. They just simply inherit a belief system. And, a, and a, an action system 
And in that sense, they are the they are players in the game, but they are not the game makers. So okay. I make a distinction. Now, now break that down for, for the person on the street one time. Right. Go, go, go over that again. <laughs> so that, go over that are, again. There are some people who are puppets. All right. And there are <laughs> others who are puppeteers. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Free your mind. I'll try to do a better job. Free. <laughs> okay. Free your mind. Return to the source. African origins. Why that title? Okay. Well, obviously, we've been talking about um, the the fact that the adjustment to domination is 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 kind of a, a mental adjustment as well as uh, a physical adjustment. So, for the person who is enslaved, and for the person who enslaves, I've already suggested that there is a distortion between the real world and what they believe. There's a mismatch between those two things. So what we need to do in order to get back at the truth is to um, have mental freedom. So I like to title this a program about mental freedom. So it's free your mind. Return to the source suggests the way to get to mental freedom. That means going back to primary sources. Uh, instead of talking about what someone heard, Let's go to the evidence itself. Uh, also, in the case of African people, it means returning to African sources, because that's the only way that renewal can occur. And then, of course, African origins refers to the fact that uh, uh, Africa is the home of many things. And most of us don't know that. And it's, and it's been, um, things have been said about Africa that make us believe the opposite of that. We don't believe that Africa was a creative place, that it was a teacher. We believe that Africa was always a recipient, a student of other people. And so African origins, uh, which is the source, one of the sources, by considering those African origins, it's a way to free the mind of oppressor and oppressed. I have a short section that I call the defamation of African people. And the reason that I do this is that the um, it's important to establish the fact uh, that um, some of the things I said are true. And I, uh, we won't have time to go into many of these, but I'll just show you okay. an example of uh, the perceptual distortion, the denial of reality, uh, the attempt to erase history, the attempt to oppress culture. All right. Uh, in 1910, uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica had an article in it about Negro. This would be one of many examples of how Africans and other people get information about themselves. And here's an example. I actually took a photograph of that article.